In this video, let's see another subtopic or a topic related to invertible matrices of the chapter matrices. The topic's name is elementary transformations. Basically, elementary transformations are actually of six types. Three are the row transformations and three are the column transformations and they add up to six transformations. These transformations are necessary in order to find out the inverse of a matrix which we will be studying in the next topic. So this topic is totally dedicated to elementary transformations wherein we will be studying six transformations again I am saying three related to rows and three related to columns. Let's understand what the first transformation says. The first transformation is interchange of any two rows or columns that means if given a matrix, you can apply two kinds of transformations related to interchange. The first would be interchange of any two rows and the second in the same category is interchange of any two columns. Let's see what do I mean by this. Suppose I have been given a matrix A and the matrix has some elements like 1, 0, 5, 3, 1, 2. Now you can find out the order of the matrix. It is a 2 by 3 matrix. And when you know the order of this matrix, you know that if I need to apply the first elementary transformation related to interchange, what is it? The first transformation says interchange of any two rows or any two columns. So it can be done in a manner as R1, R3. What is this symbol? This symbol refers to interchange. It means you are basically interchanging R1 with R3. So now what is the resultant matrix? The resultant matrix is a new matrix with a slight change in the rows. So if this is the case R1 interchange with R3 you need to check whether R3 exists. No. So if some student writes it in this manner that R1 is interchange with R3 the student is actually writing it incorrectly because there is no row 3. So what does he need to write? He needs to basically write it in the form as R1 interchange with R2. Now it is correct and now you can interchange the rows. So what is the resultant matrix? It is 3, 1, 2 and 1, 0, 5. Basically why are we studying this? Because we know that these concepts will be helpful in calculating the inverse. So the resultant matrix would be this. But if this operation is not applied, suppose I don't need to apply this operation, I am interested in applying something related to the columns and not rows. So what can it be? It can be basically C1 interchange with C3 or C2 interchange with C1 or anything. So what is it like? It is like something which we are writing it here. Suppose the operation says C1 interchange with C3. Now is this correct? Yes, because there are actually three columns. So now the interchange gives me the resultant as something which is a new matrix with some interchanges. So 1, 3 becomes my third column. Second column is intact, there is no change, you see there is only interplay of 1 and 3 columns and 5, 2 becomes my first column. So this is what I mean by C1 interchange with C3. So basically how do you write this? You write it in a manner as Ri interchange with Rj or Ci interchange with Cj and so on, right? So this is regarding the first operation, first elementary transformation split into two, one regarding rows, one regarding columns. So basically we've started up till now two kinds of transformations. Let's erase it and make space for the second category of transformation. The second transformation is written in the form of the second point. We'll be seeing a numerical example as we saw for the first one. So what does the second one say? The second one says that multiplication of elements of any row or column, multiplication of elements of any row or column by a non-zero number and the non-zero number can be in anything, say I say it is k which is not equal to zero, it can be a scalar quantity. Say again we have a matrix, the matrix is A and it is a matrix, it is 2, 5, 3, 4, 1, 2. You always need to understand that the matrix can be of any category. It can be a square matrix, a diagonal matrix and so on. Now, here again we have two rows and three columns. What does the second point say? It says multiplication of the element by a non-zero number. So, it can be split again into two categories, one for rows and one for columns. 
Suppose I have R2 wherein I need to multiply R2 by some scalar quantity which is non-zero. So it can be R2 is equal to 4 by 7 R2, right? So what will be the resultant? The resultant matrix is basically a matrix wherein this transformation has been applied. So the operation is applied only on the second row, not on the first, copy the first as it is. So it is 2, 5, 3. Second row has what? It has 4 multiplied by 4 into 7. R2 is what? Fourth number element here 4. So 4 4s are 16 by 7. Next again 4 by 7 into R2. So it is 4 by 7 only because anything into 1 is that same thing. 2 into 4 by 7 is 8 by 7. So this is what we meant by multiplication of any non-zero number to a row. What about column? Again, suppose we have the operation for the columns. For the column it can be say C1 is having the operation such that C1 is multiplied by 1 by 5. It can be multiplied by 5 also, by 2 also, by anything. So if C1 is 1 by 5 C1, what is the category of the result? The result becomes a resultant matrix and that matrix does not have any change in the order, right? So it is 2 into 1 by 5. So it is 2 by 5. C1 has the change. You need to apply the change. It is 4 into 1 by 5 which is 4 by 5. Do we have any change in C2 or C3? No. So just copy it 5, 1, 3, 2. So it is 5, 1, 3, 2. So again make a note of it that this what we did was the operation elementary number 2, transformation number 2, one related to rows we studied, one related to columns. Next we have the third transformation. So let's make space again to understand the third transformation. The third transformation is again related to both rows and columns. So in all we'll be studying the six transformations in this manner. So let's have a matrix again. And the matrix given to me is again say A, it is 5, 3, 2, 5. This time we are taking a square matrix for the E's. Now, row operation will be there, a column operation will be there. First, let's leave the statement. The statement says addition to the elements, addition to the elements of any row or column, again that means for 2, any row or column, then the corresponding elements, the corresponding elements of any other row are multiplied by any non-zero number. If you find this a bit lengthy, let's make it cut short by the numerical illustration. So basically there are two terms that you highlighted in your mind while reading. One was addition, the other was multiplication and the third thing again I want to make it clear is a non-zero number which is a scalar say k not equal to zero. What does the operation have to say? Suppose for rows addition and multiplication both right so it is say r2 has something called as r2 plus 4 r2 or you can say it as r1 plus 4 r2 or you can say it as r2 plus 4 r1 which will be more better that means what we are doing is we are basically adding up and we are also multiplying with the other row so as to obtain a new resultant matrix. See what has to be done. The resultant matrix would be a matrix wherein the second row should be there. That means 2 and 5 should be there. And the change would be in the second row only. So you can first copy the first row. First row does not get changed. So don't get changed it. Just write it down. Now R2 has what change? R2 plus 4 R1. So firstly 4 into R1 means 4 into 5 is 20. 20 plus R2. 20 plus 2 is 22. Repeating it again with the second element. R2 plus 4 R1. 4 into 3 is 12 plus R2. 12 plus 5 is 17. So that means while we find the inverse of a matrix by the row and column transformations, we'll be using these transformations more and more. So basically we need to understand that yes, three kinds of transformation exist. Interchange, multiplication by a non-zero number which we saw in the second case and the third case is usage of both addition and multiplication. Column transformation is left. We have two columns. Suppose the transformation is applied to column number one which says that column one plus four 
column 2. It can also be that plus of minus 4 into column 2. Because addition was told, yes, we used addition, but minus sign can also be multiplied, right? It has to be non-zero. It does not specify whether it should be negative or positive, right? So, let's do this one. C1 as uh, changes to C1 plus minus 4 C2, what is the resultant matrix? Let's see. The resultant matrix would be having no change in C2, no change in column 2. So, apply the same column copying here. Change is only in the first column. So, it is 5 minus 4 into C2. What is 4 3s are 12. So, 5 minus 12 is minus 7. Next, C1 minus 4 C2 minus 4 into C2 minus 4 into 5 is minus 20 plus 2. Minus 20 plus 2 is minus 18. So, this is the resultant matrix. So, in this video, we basically saw three elementary transformations. As you can see, these are listed here. The first is interchange of any two elements in the rows and columns, interchange of rows and columns, multiplication of the elements of a particular row or a particular column by non-zero and the third involved both the usage of addition and multiplication along with multiplication by a non-zero number.